almost like everybody else does. It's just at a point that you cannot feel. Right. Does that make you, your finger just can't pick up? Well, I understand that's that, reason, that's the reason because of this disease. And this just pumps the fluid around of what the heart can't do. Yes. Right, but why is the why is the doctor set the pressure? He doesn't set the pressure. They they determine the only thing you can set on this is the speed of that rotor. That's the only thing they have to control. Okay? So normally it's between eight thousand RPMs and ten thousand RPMs. It doesn't just between eight and ten. It, you guys are never gonna deal with it, but just so you know, eight to ten. So if his RPMs were set at ten, that rotor is moving faster. That means it's unloading his heart faster means there's less fluid in his left ventricle, thus that aortic valve doesn't need to open as often. Now if you're on 8,000 RPMs, the rotor's going slower, letting that LV recover a little bit, there's more fluid in that left ventricle, okay? More fluid means the aortic valve is going to open more, because fluid slash pressure is what makes your aortic valve pop off. That's how they can control it. They do what's called a ramp speed study, it doesn't matter. But they, they see how high they can go, and then they see how low they can go, and then they pick out a happy spot. Does that make sense? Well, they're setting up a mechanical time for when the valve's going to open, right? It's not dependent on the mm -hmm. electrical activity. Um, his is set at 9,400. Okay. His RP, normal. RP, pretty, pretty normal. 9,400. And, and it's on mm -hmm. that thing that we hook him up to at night, the the electrical box that we hook him up to at night, and it has readings across there, and his is always 9,400, or it'll drop down to 9,300. Uh, anywhere within that, they say within 150, but on, so his is set at that, and the, what they explained to me was there wasn't the opening and closing of the valve. They said that it was like, a, when you turn a water hose on, that it was just continually flowing, and that it just co continually flowed. They say well, your aortic valve doesn't have to open. I'm just saying normally that's what they do. Well, they, I just met what him. Up with Doppler, though, right? What? Is, What's that? That's what you're picking up the Doppler. Is your, the is the aortic valve? Your aortic valve is what makes you be able to feel it because right. it's going like this. Like if your hand is going through a tub of water, it goes going like that. Your fingers, our fingers, can pick that up. Your Doppler can pick up the teeny tiny little bit that the heart's kind of going through because our hearts go fill, eject, fill, eject. His heart's going like, uh, like that, not much. I don't, I don't know exactly how a Doppler works, but I it know it just that picks up a teeny tiny little current yeah. that our but I touch know they can. Want, but I know they want his blood pressure at all times between 60 and 100. Well, the Doppler, that's what she's map. saying, it'll that's pick up the reading of the beats of my heart. Let's still. wait for blood pressure. Let's stay on pulse for a minute, okay? And then it'll, you know, you can get the pulse through the Doppler, you can hear it, right? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Oh, I understand. I'm just I'm not making myself clear, but you say a, a Doppler picks up the pulse, so we'll go with that and move on. Okay, we, we can talk about it later. I might just not be explaining it right. That's completely normal for me, but we can talk about it later if you want. Yes, your pulse picks up what your finger can. Okay, without it, you don't know what the pulse is. Nothing you feel on him or any other patient can be considered accurate. So um, with that said, if you got to him and he was unconscious, let's say you get to him, he's in his house, okay, he's unconscious, you feel for a pulse, he doesn't have one, how do you know if he's alive? Other ways. But without a doctor, you don't know for sure. And that's happened. I mean, it does, not very often. Yeah, they, they told me that uh, if the emergency people came to the house and stuff, that they would not fill the pulse. Mm -hmm. and right. And if he has a caregiver, but uh, um, not every patient will. So just kind of think if you got to a patient who was sleeping or unconscious or whatever with no pulse and you don't have someone to tell you, or you, you're kind of blind without. Can you still do the CPR? I don't know. One second. Let's, get, let's go one at a time here. Um, does what's that make sense? Huh? That's what I thought. 
if you get to a patient that doesn't have a pulse and is not awake and you don't have a carryover there, how do you know if they're alive? That's the question. Well, we could find out the pulse running with a stethoscope, right? Good answer. Well, all that tells you is the pulse running on the Yes. Alive. I'm trying to tell you guys that you need a Doppler, okay? You need to try to get a <laughs> you Doppler. just say it. Just get a Doppler. That's what you need to do. And I know that nobody, I know every place I go to doesn't have a Doppler. It's a, it's a common thing. At least give it a shot. You can get them on eBay for like 150 bucks. They're not, it's just a very uh, simple piece of equipment. You don't have to have anything fancy. You just box, cord, pen. Put it on there and turn it on. It would be easier to have these patients sent home with a Doppler. Um, <laughs> I mean, part of their insurance pay for it, I mean, all that kind of thing, and um, each patient, they get their own blood pressure cuff and stuff. And that's a, a harder, <coughs> it's an impossible feat for me to tackle, but it's harder to take on a whole hospital and how they do things than it is for me to try to talk to you guys into it. How <laughs> did you sell? No, I don't sell. Yeah, I, sell. I don't sell anything. Yeah, I don't sell. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't sell this. I just talk about it. Uh, pulse. Okay, so questions on Pulse. Are we, are we good on pulse? So once you have, let's pretend we have a Doppler now, 60 to 100, just like anybody else, tachycardic, bradycardic for the same reasons. If he's bradycardic, you give what you give for bradycardic. Okay, make sense? Um, so blood pressure. Um, he has this fancy little blood pressure cuff, and these are becoming more common. So a lot of the centers in the United States are sending patients home with these. Okay? Not all, but some. So you guys are lucky where you'll have this. The best, so we monitor these patients by their mean arterial pressure. So the average of systole over diastole. The difference between systole and diastole in LVAD patients is very, very narrow. That's why we monitor the math. Okay? Because we're not completely filling, completely ejecting anymore. So, to get a map, if you don't have this, but you do, but if you don't, and uh, this is another LMAD patient or whatever. Do you have manual blood pressure cuffs or, or uh, automatic? Manual, good. Um, now let's pretend we have a Doppler, and then we'll pretend we don't. Manual blood pressure cuff, Doppler over the brachial, blow up just like you would, let it out just like you would, you'll hear one bump, that's your MAP. You'll one beat. Your return to flow is your, your mean arterial pressure. That's all you should hear. You don't have a Doppler, or in the interim until you see a Doppler, or whatever the case may be, stethoscope. You'll get it 50% of the time. Okay? Blow it up just again, you'll get the one bump. You'll get it, you'll hear it 50% of the time with a, with a stethoscope. Um, Doppler always. second choice if this didn't exist. Uh, if you put an automatic cuff on there, what it will do is it, it, will, t it will give you a blood pressure. It won't be 100% accurate. It'll have a very narrow pulse pressure, like 90 over 87, 90 over 85, but it will give you something. It will give EMS people enough to know where you're at. So 90 over 85 would be better than 35 over 25, right? It's enough to give you an idea. Um, this it's been a while since I've seen these. I think you put this on your arm, right? Yeah. Let's do it. I haven't done one of these in a little while. On, on that one, to get the mean arterial pressure, and Todd will always have this, so if you guys ever that have to come to our house, we have it, but you, when you get the systolic and the diastolic, you double the diastolic. So like if it's yes. if it comes up 90 over 80 or 90 over 75, let's say, you would double the 75 and you would have 150. You would add the 90 to the 150, which would make it what 240. And then you divide your number by three, and so you would take three into the 240. I know that sounds She's complicated. She's going to explain it all. I know it sounds all. complicated. If you guys remember that, that's great. But not, I don't even remember I'll that. Say not me and my mom are always living, so we can do it for you. If you're not, I don't even remember that. 
you but just it's double the dice dollar and divide by three. That's why the caregivers are so important. Mm -hmm. It is. Because 